and uh, thanks Anthony for giving me this time and I thank God for this wonderful opportunity that uh, I speak about the correction within the church. So while I say correction within the church, what I mean is uh, correction both in the local church as well as in the universal church. Because uh, we are in the end times and we know that there is a lot of uh, 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 noise in terms of false preaching which is happening around this world. If you see like you know there is a lot of false doctrines, false preachings which tend to happen as part of the TV ministry as well, uh, majorly. And we also see there is a lot of false preaching happening as part of the social networking uh, portals. We see YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere there is a false preaching. Everyone without understanding the gospel and the centrality of the Bible, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, without understanding the storyline of God, people tend to interpret Bible as per their own convenience, as per their own advantage. We also have a lot of false preaching, false doctrines coming as part of the mega churches as well. So today I'll make an attempt uh, to help all of us to equip in such a way that we follow the sound doctrine and at the same time it is whose responsibility, it is whose responsibility to do this correction because we are taught historically by our parents, by our pastors, everyone saying that we should not correct. Who are we to correct someone? The pastor is the head of everything. We should not correct the pastor even if he is saying. Because we do not know what the Bible is telling, we think whatever pastor is teaching is correct. When we hear from the pastor of the mega church, we think because there is one lakh congregation, we say we do not know what the Bible is teaching. We think what the mega church pastor is teaching is 100% correct. I have several examples of this. When I try to correct people, they say uh, so and so mega church preacher, preacher, he has 1 lakh, 1 lakh 20,000, 1 and a half lakh congregation. Do you think he doesn't know the Bible that you are correcting? And then at the same time, people tend to show the scriptures. Who are we to correct? Because we ourselves are sinful people. How can we correct other person when we ourselves are in the sin? When we battle in our day-to-day -day temptations, when we battle in our day-to-day -day flesh because of Adam's fleshiness, we should not correct. And people quote the scripture very wrongly. So with this background, I will uh, get into uh, if at all correction needs to happen in the church, how do we do the correction? Now, when there is a lot of noise, like, you know, when there is a lot of correction happening, like, you know, I know some of the theologian brothers, they are rebuking and correcting the false preaching. Lot of people, lot of senior citizens or lot of uh, Pentecost, CSI, different denominations, majority, I would say, they say, see, we are fighting among ourselves. What will the unbelievers think when they see this? is the mindset of the people. They don't care the glory of God is getting impacted. They are worried about the people. What the people think. Always the conscious of the mankind is what people think. What the unbelievers think. But the mind of the believers of God, the born again believers should be what is the impact of this false preaching for the glory of God. How many people are getting deceived because of this false preaching. We know Jesus himself saying in Matthew 24, 11, right? Many false preachers will come. What is the meaning of many? I often say this, in 100%, many is not 50%. Many is not 60%. If it would have been moderate, if it is 50 or 60%, many means 80%, 90%, 95%. Means the majority of the preaching is false preaching okay and uh, even in Matthew 22 14 uh, Jesus himself tells many are called but few are chosen do you understand this many are called means 85 90 95 percent are called but only few are chosen what is few in hundred percent five percent ten percent fifteen percent could be max that is few in in hundred percent I would see I would measure few as 10%, less than 10%. So, we are living in very dangerous times. 
So we need to have a holistic understanding what is the doctrine of correction as part of the local church and the universal church. It is whose responsibility, today we will see, it is whose responsibility to correct this correction. Does Jesus need to come and uh, uh, die again? Does the revival of Jesus Christ uh, uh, need to happen? Yes, for sure. But through you, through me, through the church, through local church, through universal church, this correction needs to happen. But the problem of the local church and the universal church is very passive. That we don't care for correction because we don't want to hurt people. We don't want to hurt. We don't want to get into contradiction. We want to please people, but we do not want to please God. Okay, with this background, I'm just getting into scripture. What the Bible is teaching about the correction. Uh, what Paul has written in the context of the church. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Okay, so what the Bible is telling. If you find someone caught up in sin, you who are spiritual should restore that person back. Means it is whose responsibility? Is it not our responsibility? But what are we taught? Who are we to correct other person? Because we ourselves are not good. We ourselves, we battle in struggles. We ourselves battle in sin. How can we correct some person when we ourselves are not correct? But the scripture, Paul very clearly telling that we ought to correct the person who is caught up in sin. So you could clearly see even in James 5, 19 and 20, if, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back. So it is the responsibility of the believer to make sure that if we find some, bro some brother, it doesn't need to be local church, but it also has to be the universal church. Irrespective of whether it is local church or the universal church, it is the responsibility of the believer when we see someone caught up in sin, we are supposed to restore that person back. And then next scripture, we know this familiar, everyone should know this very by heart. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking and correcting uh, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So this all scriptures, this entire Bible, but then we are trained saying that like, you know, December 31st, uh, one scripture and it will be told, this is the scripture for your entire year. Is it true that way? The entire Bible is God breathed. The entire Bible is an encouragement. Not only one scripture which you get on December 31st. Okay. However, the entire scripture is God breathed, profitable for teaching, rebuking, correction. So the scripture is telling correction. We are supposed to do correction. The problem of people today is we don't correct. We want to please people. We want to be good to everyone. We, we don't want to harm anyone and we don't correct anyone. We want the sin to prevail as part of the body, which is the church is the body of Lord Jesus Christ. We need to see with Lord of holiness within it. Actually, there is a scripture in Hebrew which says, it is the responsibility of an overseer to make sure it is a holy gathering. And if we don't correct one another, where will it be holy gathering? If we allow. Now apply this principle in context to the mega churches. When people come and gather uh, as church and worship together, as saints of the living God, is there holiness as part of the mega church? Because scripture very clearly tells, it is the responsibility of the elder to make sure it is a holy gathering. There is no correction in the mega church. The Bible demands correction because the body of Lord Jesus Christ, the local church is the holy one. It is a holy gathering. It is a group of born again believers gathering together. Okay, moving on to next. What is the concept of uh, a person committing sin as part of the local church? The scripture, Matthew 18, 15 to 17. If you, your brother or sister uh, is caught, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, 
you have won them over. Means, if you find a person caught up in sin as part of this local church, then let one person go and correct this person who is in sin. If he listens to you, then you have gained that brother. But if he doesn't listen, then what? But if then, verse 16, but if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. We know historically as well as part of the Old Testament as well, in order to prove a point, we need to have two or three testimonies. So, when one person is going and telling, he is not listening, take another two or three and try to convince that brother. Okay? And then next what? If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. Means what next? One person is telling, two or three persons are telling, then the case is put forward in, in front of the church. Verse 17, if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would be a pagan or a tax collector. What it means is, first, tell it by one person. Let two person tell. Let, let the entire church tell. After that, if he still doesn't listen, as church, church is a body of Lord Jesus Christ, as church, whatever you are going to take a decision on the earth, the same decision is approved in the heaven. This is not the context of when two or more gather, your presence is there. It is not that. It is the context of a sinning brother in the church. This scripture is speaking about that. You see that. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on this earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on the earth will be loosened in heaven. Right? So this is the doctrine of discipline, what has to happen in context to a sinning brother in the church. Okay, next, one more scripture. 1 Corinthians, this is very, very important. The next two verses are very, very important. I want you to be very mindful about this. This is the context of the Corinthian church. So in the Corinthian church, there were a lot of problems in the first century. There were three to four problems. First problem is there were divisions in the church. There was adultery in the church. There were favoritism in the church. There were different aspects. So, this context of the chapter 5 in the 1st Corinthian is speaking about the people, in spite of accepting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, there was even adultery in the church. Let us see the scripture. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and a kind that even pagans do not tolerate. A man is sleeping with a father's wife. So, Paul is writing in context to the church, Corinthians, where there is adultery, where there are some people who are gathering as part of the church, in, uh, where they are involved in the sexual relationship with their father's wife. And they tend to boast about it. Verse 6, you bo your boasting is not good. Don't you know that the little is leaving the whole batch of duff? means one person being part of the church is going to spoil the entire church. And you know what is the discipline? Uh, actually, in fact, Paul said straight away in verse 3, For my part, even though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit, as one who is present with you in a way, I have already passed judgment in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ on the one who has been doing this. So, Paul is telling, we need to judge this person who is committing sin as part of the church. When you are assembled and I am with you in spirit and the power of Lord Jesus Christ is present, hand this man over to the Satan for the destruction of the flesh. What is Paul telling? Let one person tell. Let two or three persons tell. Let the church tell. If he doesn't listen, hand over this person to Satan means hand over this person to hell. Paul is already passing a judgment to hand over this person to hell. Okay? And you just see that uh, there is a instruction which is given by Paul in verse 12. This is God speaking about it. What business it is of mine to judge those who are outside the church? 
are you not to judge those inside means as part of the local church as part of the universal church you are supposed to judge one another as part of you judging and correcting one another you are going to grow in sanctification you are going to grow in holiness you are going to grow in righteousness we will see those scriptures in my sub uh, subsequent scriptures so paul is very clearly telling what business it is to judge those outside the church are you not are you not to judge those who are inside the inside people are born again people the inside people are the people of the church the local church so what is that we are learning here we are supposed to correct and you see this the next one very dangerous scripture and uh, we tell like you know we should not correct pastor but let us see what the scripture is telling you and me telling is not the foundation it is scripture which is the foundation it is bible which is the foundation we saw second timothy 3:16 all scripture is god breathed profitable for teaching rebuking and correcting we need to rebuke we need to correct we need to teach okay now let us see we are taught right we should not correct pastors oh pastor is uh, higher in order uh, in the church so we should not correct the pastor even if it is committing sin even if he is te teaching false doctrines we should not correct you see what is today lot of prophecy people are telling that trump will win what happened i am going to release a video within next couple of weeks there are so many people sadhu selvaraj is one false prophet and there are so many people who prophesy trump is going to win and to my surprise people are telling jesus and came to me and told me that trump is going to win tell people to vote to uh, trump to such extent anyhow i will not go out of the context but what i am trying to tell is when we try to correct people like this in youtube channel i told social media and all false preaching right we need to take responsibility it is our responsibility god has given his spirit to us god has made us a salt to the nation we are light to the nation we cannot ignore it in trying to please people okay suppose if a pastor is teaching a false doctrine let's say mega church preacher is uh, preaching a false doctrine everyone will tell tell in private because he is elder tell in private but what will happen to the 1 lakh people who already learned the wrong doctrine these 1 lakh people will go and make it 10 lakhs what happens to the glory of god what happened to the doctrine of god right now let us see the scripture what the scripture is telling in context to the pastor do we need to correct pastor or do we not correct the pastor okay this is first timothy 5:17 to 20 the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor yes the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor especially those who work in preaching and teaching so pastors who put their every effort in preaching and teaching are worthy of double honor yes we need to respect them more we need to love them more we need to be obedient to them we need to be obedient to the instruction we need to be submissive to the authority of the eldership certainly yes but if there is any doctrine or any sin which this pastor is committing then what the scripture is commanding us to do whether the scripture is telling to do in private or public let us see that for scripture says do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out of the grain and the workers deserve his wages do not entertain an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses means if you see a pastor is teaching a false doctrine or is living in some sin or has committed some sin sin you need to at least have two or three witnesses before you confront him if you observe once don't go and rebuke directly have at least two or three witnesses the concept of bible is two or three witnesses right so when you have two or three witnesses see the dangerous scripture verse 20 but those elders who are sinning you are to reprove before everyone 
so that the others may take the warning. So what the scripture is telling? Is it telling you to do it in private or public? Now, when there are a lot of false preachers, as part of the mega churches, as part of the TV media, as part of the social networking, when they are doing false preaching, are you supposed to do it in private or public? That is the reason theologians, apologists, they correct in public. God's name is getting uh, impacted. God's glory is getting impacted. In fact, in the interest of time, but in 1 Thessalonica uh, chapter 2 verse 11, you can make the note of the scripture. What Paul tells is, 1 Thessalonica 2.11 I have come here, Paul is telling to, to the Thessalonical church, I have come here not wearing mask to please you, but I have come here to rebuke you because God is looking at my heart. I am not here to please you, but I am here to please God. So what is the business of Paul? The business of Paul is to please God, not please people. But what are we doing? The entire community, the anyone, anyone I am telling you, I get tired explaining them. This is a huge burden in my heart for a long time. I wanted to do this. Is correction needed in the church? Video and upload in the YouTube so that I can publicize publicly for a long time. And today that is the reason I am recording in camera as well so that I can upload this. So now to summarize this, I want to tell you is correction is our responsibility. We should correct the church. We should correct the people. And we should not try to please people, but we should try to please God. <music>